this is, for many years, it's been the integration of digital technology into live performance. Um, and so I wanted to incorporate Darwin into my courses and into our productions. In order to do that, uh, I needed to have tools that would allow us to animate Darwin in really expressive ways and to make those tools flexible and easy enough that my acting and directing students who don't have any programming experience can actually work with them. Uh, so the uh, primary software platform that I use in my interactive media classes is called Max MSP Jitter, which is one of the most widely used uh, environments within the art world for musicians and visual artists and theater people and dancers. Uh, so the first thing that I needed was some way to connect Darwin to this platform so our students could do that. And I uh, went to Mike here, who's just finished his MM program, his master's program in musical composition, and is a brilliant programmer heading off to a PhD program uh, in digital media and technology. Um, and so uh, he created uh, the first half of this project, which is Tell Darwin. Uh, and I will let you explain that part. So here's Mike. So Tell Darwin is a command interpreter for Darwin Op Robot. It allows users to send simple, intuitive, human-readable commands to the robot wirelessly over UDP, and it carries out those commands as you would expect. It was designed specifically to receive commands from Max MSP, which, as Dr. Salz just told you, is a graphical flow control programming language that's popular in the arts. Uh, Dr. Salz uses it to control many other things in his studio, like the lighting, like you know what else. Um, so with Tell Darwin running on the robot and Max MSP running on the laptop, changing the position of the, of the robot's right el elbow is just as simple as sending those words over EDP. Uh, Max's graphical programming environment makes it very easy to build up more sophisticated controls for the robot servo. Uh, for instance, the upper body there, uh, the lower body. Uh, Tell Darwin also gives you easy access to everything on the CM730, like the eye, you know, all the LEDs, the ear sensors, uh, the accelerometer and gyroscope. Uh, if the robot were moving about, you would see meaningful numbers being printed out there. Tell Darwin is also capable of streaming digital multimedia between the robot and the laptop. So just, for example, you can send audio from the from the robot's uh, microphone to the laptop. You can also stream audio the other way from the laptop and have it play out of the robot speaker. You can stream uh, video from video from the uh, robot's camera to the laptop. There you go. <laughs> this not only gives you direct access to the image's pixel data, but also gives you the opportunity to use Max's extensive library of built-in and third-party computer vision algorithms to make sense of the data. Here, someone implemented OpenCV in Max, so that's all available. Uh, down here are just examples of how you can use some of the robot's other functionality with Tell Darwin, like the built-in walking module, and you can pass commands directly to the operating system to make use of built-in command line programs and things like that. Um, so in short, Tell Darwin understands hundreds of commands that offer easy, comprehensive access to all of the robot's functionality from within the Max MSP programming environment. Dr. Saltz took advantage of this capability and actually wrote sophisticated software in Max MSP to control the robot, which he's going to tell you about now. All right, so part two of the tools that we created is what we call Darwin Animator. And Darwin Animator is a tool to create very complex, organic, emotive, interactive motion sequences of any length for the Darwin robot very, very easily without any programming whatsoever, and also to tightly synchronize the robot's actions with stage lighting, sound, and video, since you can trigger all those cues from Animate Darwin. Um, with Darwin Animator, <coughs> the first thing that you can see there the graphical interface, is control any of the 20 servos in real time. So you can control Darwin like a puppet. So you could have a puppeteer off stage, particularly if you're uh, doing it wirelessly, interacting with a live performer. 
and we can modify these controls any way that you like. Um, and also, of course, the LEDs and the eyes and the forehead, uh, the, the walk controls, they're all there interactively. Uh, you can also um, move the uh, robot into any position you like by disabling any of the servos. So, for example, you can disable uh, the right arm. Good. The left arm, the head. Okay, and so you can do that again to all the servos. Put it into a pose you like, um, and uh, once you've, uh, you can then create a snapshot of the pose when you're happy with it, and you can transition from any pose to any other pose using a simple slider or setting a time. You can also, uh, so this is 500 milliseconds. Mac, one thing that is good about Max is it's very precise in terms of its timing since that's what it's designed to do. Um, uh, and you can also create motion curves if you don't want a linear transition from one pose to another. Uh, there's a tool within uh, Darwin Animator to create a curve for that transition. Um, you can also, and this is the part that I, that I enjoy the most, uh, animate Darwin um, by disabling the, the servos or actually by using the puppeting controls and recording those movements in real time. And so particularly for our actors, this is by far the most intuitive way to create an animatronic you know, pre-recorded motion sequence. So for example, if we disable both arms, So these motions can be as complex and synchronized or unsynchronized or organic. Use gravity, okay, stop that. And then you can, you can layer on as many of these recordings as you like. So you can start with any combination of servos and then add another servo. So now let's add the head to that. Add one last thing. How about just disabling just the waist? Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Start recording. And actually, I like really subtle motions, particularly of the waist, helps to really give us uh, quality of life to the robot. Okay, and then freeze it. Now let's look at the whole sequence. So that's a pretty quick way. You can keep layering those on, playing with them. If you don't like uh, the last motion you created, you can undo and recreate it. Save it to disk, reload it again, modify it again, uh, and create hundreds of sequences uh, this way uh, very, very quickly. Um, let's see. Um, Okay, so you can also make Darwin speak in one of two ways. Uh, first of all, we can use the eSpeak program that's built into Linux to uh, send any text message we want and have uh, the robot say these things. Hello, my name is Keith. Um, I'm your friend, Marco. Okay, so that's very handy. And by the way, we call our robot Zeebzob, as he told you. Um, and now you can also send any audio file uh, as Mike was showing you through Tell Darwin. So you can play any uh, audio file through the robot and uh, anim animate Darwin will allow you to uh, have the head bob in sync with the audio. That's a, that's a feature you can turn on or off to, since obviously as you know Darwin doesn't have a mouth. Uh, this gives much more of a quality of speaking. So 
Uh, let's do that. You like to load uh, an audio file, and then let's see Darwin's. Thank you, Darwin. <clears throat> All right. Um, now, once you've created a series of poses, so you can transition from one pose to another, or motions, you can transition out of any motion into any pose, and then into any other motion, and then into another motion, <clears throat> uh, and then various uh, language. You can string all of these together into what we call a sequence. Uh, so sequences allow you to link together any combination of motions, poses, you can change the eye color, and you can see it's all done very visually here, the forehead color. You can add either kind of speech at any point. Um, you can also play in your same sequence audio to the exter to external speakers, so you can have sound effects or music perfectly synced. So just as it begins a motion, you get a sound effect. Um, same thing with video. Uh, since Max MS Jitter has the capability of playing video, you can have video cues synced up. Um, you can uh, build in pauses. You can link from one sequence to another. So you can create an elaborate sequence uh, and then have it linked to another either right away or interactively. Um, and uh, there are also ways to control the lighting with exactly the same sequence. Um, actually, one thing that we didn't show is that there's also the ability, if we go back to the main controller, uh, to go into a pose over audio, uh, so to use the audio, this is looking at the amplitude, to proportionally go into a pose to create really, really simple interactions with the robot. I don't know what pose is loaded right now, but... Uh, So once you've set up sequences, poses, motions, you can attach any of those to either a button to then for an actual performance using uh, Max. Very, very simply, you can create buttons for cues, or you could uh, trigger the cues with the keyboard. Uh, so in this case, we assigned uh, just a key, one, uh, the, a number on the keyboard, to various cues. You can see this is all the programming that's involved to make that happen. Um, so my theater students can do this very, very, very easily. Um, <clears throat> so you have a series of cues. So if we go into the first cue for our special St. Paul performance here. And the first theatrical performance uh, that we're working on outside of a class project is in the tradition of Commedia dell'arte, which is a 500-year-old theatrical form, which is interesting because it's quasi-improvised. There's a basic plot, but then within the plot, the actors improvise it. And there are a whole series of very, very strongly, clearly defined uh, characters with hundreds of years of tradition behind them. So in our production, Darwin, um, or Zibzab, is going to move in and out between a whole series of these classic comedia characters, which are highly physical, and there'll be a live performance playing the straight man, playing off of Zibzab. And we've just started training Zibzab. Uh, did you say something? I'm sorry, Zibzab. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, well, we'll, we'll let you demonstrate this, okay? Okay. Zibzab, um, I'd like you to show us the character of Pantalone, the old miserly, grouchy guy. Yeah, very, very good, Zibzab. Good, 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 good. All right, yeah, that was, that was, that was terrific. Good job, Zibzab. Great. Okay. That was excellent. Yeah, that's very good. No, no, it was good. No, no, that were terrific. You're very good. That, that was really terrific. Very good. He's just learning, so he's very, very insecure. But I, I thought he did a terrific job. All right, let's see a second character. Show us Punchinella. This is the character that the, the puppet Punch was modeled after. It's a zany uh, servant character. Can you, can you show us? Uh, okay. yeah, you really I love that path fall. That was a good touch, Steve Buggy. He didn't even do that before, so he's improvised. Fantastic. Good job. All right. 
Uh, and then I'll let uh, Zeebzab have the last word.